QuickBooks setup and integration to the top line product. A couple things you've got to do in order to make sure it's going to be a good integration is in your preferences in QuickBooks, you've got to go in through your account and go into your company preferences and make sure you're using account numbers and make sure you're using class tracking. The other thing to do is to go to inventory and make sure that it's active. Right, so that you can have the option of uh, writing to inventory transactions and tracking inventory values. When you go down to sales and customers, you really don't have to do very much in there. Just make sure that you've got them set up as taxable. And in here, in sales tax, whatever the name is, right there is the name that needs to be sitting in the uh, top lines QuickBooks export under setup right here. And the best way to integrate it is to make sure you've got the send invoices as summary check and use the integrated tax in QuickBooks check right there. These four options right here will also make sure if they're selected that it's going to update all your transactions the way they're supposed to go over with the sales tax mark. There's also a supplies section here that if you're going to do shop supplies, they need to be in QuickBooks. Now we can finish up the QuickBooks side of this. So we've got sales tax set up. We've got taxable here and non-taxable there. This is pretty much the default setup, so there's not going to be that much to do in here. Just make sure that you do charge sales tax and you do have these correctly set up with appropriate vendors. Now, once you go to your item list, this is where the actual setup begins. You're going to notice that the only thing in here is an item that says sales tax. And that's the item that the system QuickBooks generates when you turn preferences on and give it a name for its sales tax. Now, there's going to be some items that we need to add. And those items have to match the items here in the upper part of the top line setup. And I'll give you an example. If it's a counter sale, for instance, that's the first thing that we'll do. If it's a counter sale, it's always going to pretty much default to the word invoice. And in our system, you have an item ID that matches what QuickBooks calls its item ID. And if you notice here under sales, cost of goods, and the asset account, well, these names have to be in the QuickBooks item list. So what we'll do is we'll copy it just like that. You can have the system automatically generate this, but I think it's better that we review how and why they need to be in there. So we go to item list, and we go to new, and we add a other charge, and then we paste in the, the name that we picked, counter sale transaction, and then we'll call this the income from sales. And the account can be left taxed because that is a taxable transaction. And then here, we can select the income that it's going to go into. In this case, it's going to be parts and material sales. Okay. And when we go to next, it's also another charge. And it's going to be called, this is the same thing as that anyway, this is going to be called counter sale COGS. That's our cost of goods account. So we copy that. <coughs> go in here and paste that in. And that's going to be called the cost of goods. And it can be taxable or not. So it just has to make sure that it's going to go into the cost of goods account right here. And after that, we can just do next again because there's one more thing we need to put in there. And that's going to be the inventory asset account that's going to be decreased when you sell something. So we're going to pick this. And we're going to go to our QuickBooks. And we're going to put that in there. And that is the inventory reduction. And that we go to the asset account called 
Well, in this case, we call it parts inventory. We can assign it a number at any, any time. It doesn't matter. So now you've got counter sales, cost of goods, counter sales, inventory, and then just counter sale TX. They have to match exactly what they are in order for QuickBooks to know what top line is sending it. There's one more thing in there that we might as well put in while we're here. You'll never see it on a cash invoice because it'll never have labor. But if it does, we can go ahead and create the item called labor, customer labor taxable. Now we just, same thing again. Go item, go new, some other charge, put it in here, paste it in, and then we can call this one labor income. The offsetting transaction of this will, will come from your payroll. So income from service would be a good choice for this. And we just say OK. Now we've got the three basic things here sitting in basically in the item list. So when we go to the customer center, we do have a customer called counter, which we're going to go ahead and delete because we're going to uh, we'll show you how this thing posts that way. So we go here and looks like everything is set up. Now, one thing you have to remember is the class. The class is retail in this case. You can call it whatever you like. You can have the system put it in there. But this class also needs to exist in the class list of QuickBooks. And there it is. If it's not there, of course, you can just go to class and new and put it in. Now, when we go into our system, basically we have all these accounts, they're set up and they're ready to post over. But at this point, all we need to do is go find us an invoice. Let's, uh, let's say that one right there, for instance. And we look down the list. And we go across this thing to see. And over here where it's got the branch and it's got that tax code and that class, none of that has to be there. It's not required. But it can if you want to further break down the transactions and the way you do it. But preference is, at this point, for what we're doing, just to leave it blank. Now, once we select that invoice and we say, OK, I want to send that one. Let's invoice number 17341. Once we hit the Post button, it basically will prompt you and tell you that something's been posted. And then we look over in the QuickBook side, and we notice that there's an invoice sitting in there. And that invoice has the counter sale, the cost of goods, the inventory, and they're all reduced and incremented properly. And then you've got the sales tax. In this case, is 9%. There is a difference in this demo company because the tax that I generated was a different rate. But it created the invoice. And if we look at the journal, and we're going to notice that what it did was it basically took the accounts receivable and added to $4.10 to it. It increased our income from sales by $3.76. It increased our cost of goods by $2.49, which was the cost of the inventory. And it decreased our inventory asset account by $2.49. So if we were to run a, uh, a profit and loss, or we could just go in and look at the debits and credits in here. you would see that there are your debits and there are your credits. And it's put in the sales tax where it belonged. And that's basically sent the transaction over. So everything is as it's supposed to be. And now you should be able to configure the remaining items. So in review, what we make sure is that in our program, in our setup here in Topline, that we have the item list across the top, matching what the, this would create three separate items in QuickBooks. And this one would be the fourth that would contain labor. We have a class in there. And then we also, this tax one, we've marked it as tax being the type of item on the QuickBooks invoice uh, here. This is tax or non-tax. This name here is coming from the default setup that we told it that is sales tax for the item. Now, 
if there were any invoices over that we wanted to send over that were warranty or internal or customer pay or anything like that, they too would have these names in their layout. So a customer pay ticket would be able to go all the way through the same way we did here. And then if it had labor in it, we could set this up to do labor. And that would be tax. So technically, this is all we need to do now to send over a transaction of labor in it. And we would duplicate this all the way down the list. Now, there are many different ways to set up our export. Right now, I've showed you the one that we prefer because it's very clean and it lumps all the items together. And that's where these, these things mean right here. Do not send the part detail. If this is not checked, then it's going to send over the transactions to QuickBooks with part numbers and with descriptions and with everything else that's on the top line side, which is not really required. All we're looking for are the base numbers. The, the class and the auto update classes, what these have to do with is that inside of our program, when you do a work order for an internal unit, it would capture the stock number as the class. And when you send it to QuickBooks, it would take the stock number and use it as a class and every sale that was made against that stock number or purchase that was made or expense that was incurred would do it by stock number. If you're running a sales um, a full dealership, then something like that would be required or, or it would be nice to have. If you're not, then it's not required at it. Just make sure all four of those are checked and that you've got this sales tax in QuickBooks and that in your across the side here of your, of your invoices where your branch, your tax code, and your class are, that they, are, that they do exist in your class list and that this tax code does exist in your item list in QuickBooks. And then from there, Topline will take care of the rest of it. And that's how to set up the newest version of the uh, QuickBooks to Topline integration for service. We'll have another one on sales and that'll be at a later date.